What is up guys? Welcome to another video. So today we are going to be installing a Kropovich uh, slip-on GP exhaust on my 2017 Honda CBR. So I got a couple little things. So I got ended up getting the slip-on and I also got the servo buddy from Revzilla of course. Shout out to Revzilla. So let's open this up. I already opened up the uh, slip-on pretty much but yeah. Okay so this came in a little tiny package. A little tiny uh, Servo buddy. So I'm also going to be installing a um, portable charger or yeah, port whatever. No, not a portable charger. What the heck? USB charger. I don't even know what I'm saying. In this container right here, we have the slip on. We got the little clampy clamp and boom. Look at that beautiful titanium thing. Oh, it's sick. Can't wait to put this on. So I got a decibel reader on my phone. So we're going to measure the stock. Then we are going to straight pipe it, see what that says, and then put the slip on, see what that says, just to give numbers, and then like you kind of hear what it sounds like on my bike specifically. Because uh, since it's like a newer bike, I guess, even though it's like three years, not many people have it. Or, I mean, I guess a lot of people just go with the R1s because everybody loves an R1. Um, so, yeah. But I love my Honda. Let's go get this stuff installed. All right, guys. So for this install, I have latex gloves because you're not supposed to handle the uh, thing with your bare hands. So uh, that Allen keys. These are the bolts to the battery. I already have it off and it's just sitting here because I was uh, charging it. Um, so I'm going to put it on so we get the readings for the stock. And then um, I have just a little multi Allen key tool thing for whatever reason. And then I have some big uh, Allen keys because, of course, I still don't have a torque wrench, even though I should. And then a drill just for convenience. So let's get to it. All right, guys. So we're, we got the decibel tester right here. Oh, man. I don't know if you can read it. Oh, that sucks. Um, that's maximum volume, too. So it's, it's not going to be easy to read. Um, but I can just tell you guys. It's down here. It's 69 or whatever. 60 right now. But uh, once we hold it closer to here, we'll get a different sound. So I'm going to go ahead and start the bike. 99, 98, 99, 98, 99, 100, whatever. So I can leave it right there. Uh, it stayed in the 90s, whatever. So pretty much 100. All right, so now we're gonna get to the actual installation part. Um, first, we're gonna disconnect the battery again now and then take it out. We're gonna take out the servo and then we're gonna come to, oh yeah, it is this side. We're, we're gonna undo this Allen key and pop the servo out and get it out and then let it dangle with these wires that it's connected to and then get all this stuff undone so we can take this bad boy off. All right, guys, so got the battery disconnected. We just unscrew the two screws and then uh, I undid the Allen key that was here and here so we can pop this bad boy out too. However it goes, uh, looks like, a, okay, it slides back like that. So now we got this out and then take this out and then we're good. Set these to the side. And now we're gonna disconnect this cable and then hopefully get this servo motor out. All right, so currently I got this unplugged. The servo motor's just kind of chilling here at the moment. And um, so I'm back, I'm over here now. The instructions say to unscrew these two bolts, which I actually don't see the point in it because I'm kind of confused. I have it loosened up, but I don't want to take it off because I'm, I'm confused on why I'm doing this in the first place because it's these two little cables back here. So I'm just going to skip that for right now just to see what this looks like when I'm, I'm going to unscrew this Allen key and I'm going to try and pop the motor out underneath and see if I can just wiggle it around this. So I popped the servo motor right out the bottom a little bit or I unscrewed it and it kind of just flops out the bottom. You kind of just got to watch from the top hole how you get it out and stuff, but uh yeah i'm taking it out and um i had to wiggle the cords so you 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 can loosen you don't have to unscrew it to uh get the wires out of a little clamp that's kind of like right here this little clamp um so yeah you just got to wiggle wiggle the wires around that clamp until you get it and then once it's free it's just kind of there and then once we take the uh exhaust off it'll it'll come with it now we are going to undo the bottom uh little clamp and uh this bad boy all right guys so after a long struggle fight i finally got the underneath undone Ugh, i'll show you guys all right this bolt right here got it undone if it would focus right here so it's undone now and um now all we got to do 
is get this bad boy off right here and then we're good to go I did have to go get some sockets I was doing it with wrench and I was like wait why am I doing that when I have a socket so this is the bolt that I ended up getting off and it's super rusty it sucks trying to do that without WD-40 oh man I'm so freaking tired <laughs> But yeah, let's work on this bad boy. So getting that off literally took me a whole five seconds. This this is what came off. It literally was not on there tight at all. So that was easy. So now we got it loose and all we got to do is pop it out hopefully. Here, I'll go ahead and just leave this live so you can check it out. Let me make sure it got a good angle on it. All right. So, oh, let me turn off the music. Copyright. Oh man, YouTube sucks nowadays. I remember like when I was like 13 and there was there was nothing it was just it was out of love you know you're making YouTube videos so I don't know if I need to somehow uh, this other clamp shouldn't be on there tight Let's see if I can get it off all right got the old clamp off rusty ugh all right loosening I'm just not trying to oh, I'm scratching my swing arm stop um here let me put the bike back on the ground uh, all the right way there we go yep that was the issue it wasn't on the ground oh man my swing arm I'm sorry So, dang it, I can keep these wires right here, right? Um, do I really have to re-loosen these up and pull them through? No, you can't pull them through. Okay, well these, look, these, uh, they're still tangled in there. So here, let me show you guys. So they're like tangled. They're right here, but they come through here, hooping through. So it's not on the other side. It needs to be right here on this side of it, but it's on the inside. All right, guys. So got it off and uh, going to see what it sounds like. That's too loud. Way too loud. All right, guys. After that nonsense, uh, last step is just to open the new exhaust, put the clamp on, clamp it down below, and then put the bracket back on. So I'm going to do that now, and then we'll get to the end. All right, guys. So we got it installed. Look at that. Oh, yeah. So uh, the bottom bit is actually a Torx bit, but I used an Allen key, and it worked just fine. Um, got this one on just fine, too. I didn't tighten it too much because it was kind of loose. Uh, I kind of tightened it, like hand tightened it. It's kind of squishy, so it, I left it. It's good. It's on there. But uh, yeah, this thing is mean. Let's see what it sounds like after I put the battery back on. Oh yeah, I also got the servo in. It's just a little little guy, a little buddy, and uh, he just clicks in there. And then I went ahead and put the plate back that came with the um, came off the bottom of the uh, servo. So yeah, now we just gotta put the battery back in, and then we'll be good to go. All right, guys. So. I got it installed. Uh, I went ahead and installed my portable charger or battery power, whatever it is. So I just ran it from the battery under here, and then I actually just ran it right here under the tank pad. So the tank pad's easily and conveniently able to take off on the 2017 pluses. So yeah, I just ran it right here, and then it goes right here, and there it is. So boom, just unplug that. I put some 3M tape on the back of it. All right, guys, so we're going to start it up now. Let's hear what this bad boy sounds like. Ooh, yes.
Alright guys, so after a couple days of driving this motorcycle and actually giving you guys some honest feedback after having it and riding around and stuff, um, I actually really like it. I'm still a little skeptical in the back of my mind because I was going to order Yoshi at first and then I switched up and I was like, nah, I'm going to get this because it's like 2.2 pounds and it's lightweight, blah, 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 titanium and it's only a couple hundred dollars extra. Because uh, the Yoshi, I was going to get the stainless steel Yoshi and it was 400 And I didn't know they made a titanium until a little bit later. But um, yeah, I was going to go with the uh, stainless steel Yoshi and it was a couple, it was I think $400. And then whatever tax. And then I came across the Kropovich and then it was like 600 And I was like, man, I can go up $200 and it'll be titanium and two pounds lighter too. And then I saw the Yoshi, it was another 200 for the titanium version and it was 800 and it, it was like gosh what is it maybe a pound more but i mean I, i'm not really trying to cut weight for nothing like that yet um eventually when i want to turn this into a track bike and actually get out there and start doing that stuff that'll be way later and then i'll get my ducati um next i'll probably i want a grom but um yeah so that's that um i really like the um the sound that it makes higher in the RPMs. I'm not the biggest fan of the idle noise. Just like that, that button. It just, it, it, I don't know. There's something about it. It just doesn't sound right to me on a bike. But everyone else says they love it and it sounds great. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm in the middle on that. But the problem is that you can never really hear what it sounds like through a video. It It's ridiculously loud. And after watching the video playbacks, you really cannot tell how loud it is. Like, it's very loud. But no matter what, I'm glad to have that stock exhaust off. Um, I'd really like to hear a Yoshi exhaust in person. So maybe I'll buy a Yoshi some, sometime down the road or for another bike. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, Yoshi would be nice too in a way. I don't know. But I am totally not disappointed with the current exhaust. Um... I am still just skeptical because it's like I don't know much about exhaust and the, you, there's never really a way to tell like uh, what is what and like how because videos like they just don't videos just don't do it justice you know you just come by just come by and listen to it <laughs> but um yeah um I don't know if I got anything else oh I'm I am feeling a weird sense of like power delay which is what I've been reading people have so I guess I'm gonna have to power commander 3 and ECU and all that other stuff whatever get the fuel remapped I don't have a clue about none of that stuff until I do some research on it and then I'll make the next video and then I'll sound a little more educated for you guys but I have no clue what I'm doing whatsoever but yeah um, it's feeling sluggish down low like uh, I actually stalled it out the other day because it just it doesn't I don't know if it was the sound that I was making because usually like I don't know I, don't, I normally wouldn't stall out, but then, like, because the way it sounds, and it's like I'm not getting anything, like, I'm not getting any response for a couple seconds, or, like, like I'm twisting it, but it's like, mm, instead of, like, because like, it's just, that thing instantly goes 0 to 60, and I, I, just, I don't know, it felt a little sluggish. So, I'm going to have to figure out what that's all about. Um, when I installed the power, or not power, when I installed the Servo Buddy, the uh, check engine light came on, but it actually went away after about like 15 miles because like I went to work and got to work and it was like still on. And I was like, dang, I guess something's wrong. And then I rode home and it was fine. So it was about 15 miles or so, something like that. Yeah, I think so. So, um, yeah, that turned out good. I was about to freak out because the servo buddy wasn't turning on. They were talking about like you got to go to dealership and codes and we don't have none of that kind of stuff around here. So that'd be a hassle. But uh, yeah, it turned out good. Servo Buddy worked just fine, and um, I shaved I don't know how much weight overall. Uh, the stock exhaust was about 7 pounds, then the Akrapovich is 2.2 .2 pounds. So just that alone is a loss of what's... I can't even do simple math because 2.2. .2. 5 pounds, so 4.8 pounds. Um, and then the servo motor, I don't know, it felt like a couple pounds or a pound. I don't know. That thing wasn't really that heavy. It was a little heavy, but then the wires too and whatever else. But then I put the servo buddy, the servo buddy weighed like not even an ounce. That thing was so light. Like it was hollow, whatever. Um, but yeah, um, difficulty of the install was not that bad. For me being a non-engineering mechanical 
type of guy. Uh, I say I did it in, in two hours, maybe an hour and a half, which I would say is not bad for me, not knowing nothing. And um, yeah, so that that worked out pretty smooth. The only issue I had was disconnecting the servo motor. That was a pain because I didn't know that you needed to like uh, twist. So first off. Right there below my rear sets, it was tangled and twisted all up. It wasn't easy to just like pop off the little hook because it has a little hook that's attached to that I showed in the video. It wasn't as easy as pulling that hook around and then it'll come free around all the brake fluid and whatever else that other stuff is that's back there. It was actually twisted through it, so I had to get that motor off to pull the wires alone through because the servo motor's not going to fit through any of them little gaps. So getting the servo motor off took a second, but then I figured out that you got to twist a little nut and then pull it down so that you can pull the wire. And then once you pull the wire, you get the slack to take it off the, the hook loop thingy that is in there. Whatever sense that makes, you know, without seeing it. But yeah, that took that took a minute, but it, it wasn't that bad. And then after I got the servo motor off and then pulled the wires through and just took the exhaust off, uh, my exhaust, like, that little clip that was under the exhaust was actually super rusty and twisted on weird. And I was like, this thing has 3,000 miles. Why is it so rusty? But, um, I did, oh, man, I needed to put anti-seize and stuff on this stuff. I forget. I needed to order anti-seize and put on that bolt and stuff. And I was going to, when I changed stuff, I was going to put anti-seize in it so everything, like, comes off good later or whatever, whatever I want to do. But, um, next project is probably going to be, uh... ASV, I think, Shorty Levers, whatever. Whatever brand I can get. I think one of the other top brands was, like, uh, not available for my bike or something. I don't know. But I think ASV was. So I'm going to go with them and get some red Shorty Levers. I guess I'm going to stick to red. I actually wanted to play on the gold that was on the uh, forks and continue on with something like that. But I don't think I'm going to do it. I think I'm just going to stick with red because I got all this Dionese stuff that... It's stupid expensive and it's all red, so I don't want to restart. So, yeah, I was gonna do like a like dark green or something and gold, but I'm just gonna stick to red and black. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. See you later. Got more uh, motorcycle videos coming soon. Who knows? Um. Thank you for all the support on the last video. It's actually doing pretty good without any kind of like advertisement type stuff on it. Like I'm close to 300 views probably. And I mean, all I did was post it one time. Advertising as in me not posting it over and over and be like, hey, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. And me just posting it once and it's actually continually, continuously going up. So thank you guys for that. Um, hopefully the same will happen for this video. I'll work on, as as long as these motorcycle videos are doing pretty good, I'll work on changing my banner and stuff because it still says vlogs and stuff, and I'm not really vlogging anymore, so I just want to do tutorial videos and things on things that will help other people that have my same situation. But, see you guys later.